three years old, I started going to the farm with my father, and he kind of he usually stayed down there all week, and I'd go stay with him all week and ride the tractors with him. And uh, so I grew up on the farm, working every summer and through high school and even college and, and law school came back. And when I was in law school, I decided that, that farming really wasn't that bad of a, of a lifestyle and was something that I'd, I'd always been interested in. It didn't know for sure if I was gonna end up farming, but I, I enjoyed it. And I, one of the main reasons was I, I enjoyed being around my father. Uh, he was my hero in life, my best friend. And so I just just remember wanting to spend every waking moment with, with my father and on the farm. So. I came back in the summers and farm, actually farmed on my own through law school and, and dad helped me with using equipment and, and such. Uh, so when I came back, kind of the plan was, was for dad to start cutting back and me start kind of taking over. Yeah, it, it was definitely a shock when at 30 years old, your, your business partner and your best friend and so not only did I have to deal with the loss of a father, you also have to deal with the loss of a business partner and decide then you, you have, which my family has been absolutely wonderful through it all, but you still have the, the deal of, you know, siblings, non-farm siblings that inherit an ongoing farming operation. How, did, how do you work through that, you know? Uh, and then uh, it, everybody in the family is kind of all of a sudden the owner of this business that my father and I had and uh, I'm the only one that's really out on the farm that knows anything about it. So working through all that was definitely a challenge. There wasn't any disagreements through it all, and not any, but it, it would be a challenge for anybody, I guess, just uh, going through that. And luckily, the Lord's will, we've worked through it all, and, and uh, now it's just my wife and I that farm with some employees. I could, could not imagine having gone through my father's death without my, my wife there. I mean, it, you know, it just, uh, we had actually just gotten married a year before that, so we were still newlyweds when he passed away. And just not only, the, like I mentioned before, the death of a father, but also the death of your business partner and trying to get through all that and just the sheer volume of every one of these file cabinets in this room was full of <laughs> files that Dad filed himself personally and didn't really have a system, just he knew where it was. <laughs> I mean, just the fact, I mean, you don't, there was, probably a month worth of labor just sorting through the, the business files to figure out where everything was. My role with Reed Farms mainly is just helping Nathan with the office work. Um, obviously I get to use my accounting background. Um, I do enjoy uh, you know, making sure our ducks are in a row basically and um, keeping our office in somewhat good order. Oh, she's been a godsend. She's a, she's a CPA. Uh, so she, she has a financial accounting background and uh, I guess, well first and foremost, she raises my kids and be the most important thing, or our kids, <laughs> that, that she does. But uh, she, she understands bookkeeping and, and financial aspects of things, so she's really uh, been very, very good, kind of a godsend. Because I, I'll be the first to say when it comes to office work and paperwork, I may not be the most organized, and uh, but I'd say she kind of completes me on that because she is organized. and and adamant about filing and our, our filing system. My major role uh, beyond that is raising our three children and we are expecting our fourth soon. So that's obviously about something I have to balance and then just being there to support Nathan. Um, obviously he's very involved in many organizations and so I'm there just to kind of tie up any loose ends. Um, anything that needs to be done, I'm there for Nathan to, to support him. She's been able to to kind of step in uh, after my father's death and step in and, and with my, my sister not coming back anymore, my sister kind of helped train her in the specific things that we do, but she's been able to step in and take care of all the, the payroll deductions and all the payroll and bill paying and filing. I mean, we have probably 50% of our employees get deductions for something that goes somewhere, whether it's, and then uh, on top of that, you have unemployment insurance and workers comp and, uh, so, I mean, it's, it's a small business, and, and so she's done a wonderful job of keeping up with that end of the business. Mom was a farmer's wife for, for 35, 37 years, so she, she, was, she helped prepare Kristen for, for being a farmer's wife and what to expect, and able to talk to her and, and tell her how Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when you're married to a farmer, there's, there's some sacrifices you have to make, but there are some very good things about it.
But I think a lot of it is just warning her and saying, okay, now this season, during this time and planning, that you probably aren't going to see him <laughs> a bunch. And um, things like, this is the time of harvest and you'll get to go out and it's lots of fun. You'll really enjoy harvest because that's when you, you they feel like they're finishing the crop and it's always an exciting time. And I think I kind of prepared you for that type thing. Farming, obviously the ups and downs can be a little more pronounced than what I was used to. And she just said, you know, these ups and downs are just part of the adventure. And I, cause I would, could get easily discouraged. You know, maybe it was the flood in 2011 or the drought in 2012. And she just said, you know, it's just part of the adventure. And it just, it, it kind of is what it is. And there's not a whole lot you can do about that. And so that really helped. Charlene's got somewhat of a more laid back personality than I would, I do. I'm a little more of a planner and maybe a little more uptight, but she's, I've watched her and learned how, you know, she kind of just takes things as they go and she goes almost with the flow and all that. So I've definitely taken um, her example and learned from that. I guess Mr. Charles has been here for a while, but I've got two other employees that have been with me, one for I think 20 years and one for, for 10 years or, or better. And then I mean, they're, they're like family, you know, they, uh, they really, uh, uh, you, you, you obviously become dependent on them, but become, I mean, it's almost like they're, they're part of the business with you, and that's, that's very important. Well, yeah, Mr. Elton, Nathan's granddad, he, he uh, rented some ground next door to my granddad's now, and me being a youngster, I'd always come go up and mess around, and he gave me a job. And from then on, I worked, worked uh, I guess, 1974, and I left and started running on the road and come back and been back ever since. Most farmers' dream would be that their, one of their children come back and farm. My grandfather worked his his whole life, kind of getting to the point where they're able to buy land and buy some. Then my dad worked his whole life improving the land and buying more land. And I feel like so it, it, you would hope that you're able to pass the legacy on and 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 to keep it going. That would be a much more desirable uh, situation than I guess I worked my whole life on the land and then it just kind of ends and it gets leased out to other farmers. So uh, I, I would it would probably be one of the crowning achievements <laughs> in my life if I had a child come back to farm. I mean, I say one of the best decisions I ever made was coming back to farm because I got to spend the last five years of my father's life seeing him every day and working with him every day. So I, I can't look back and say, you know, man, I wish I would have spent more time with my father while he was alive. Because I mean, I worked with him. I, I spent a lot of time with him. We had a wonderful relationship. Uh, the only thing I worry about now is there a the thing that hurts me is my kids will never get to meet him. But other than that, you know, I'm definitely at peace and, and felt I uh, uh, miss him every day. But he, he, uh, he definitely uh, was a great teacher and I, I learned most I know about agriculture, I learned from him. Well, I'll put it like this, uh, Stanley, Nathan Dabb, he's just like my brother. In other words, he always called me the little bro the brother he never did have, so yeah, we, we real close. I think times get rough now. You know, sometimes I think, you know, look out, I think you might see him coming across the beef. <laughs> uh, I mean, I hope that I could live up to him. I still have to, you know, I'm trying to not do my own thing, but uh, I guess follow in his footsteps, but trying to, trying to continue the values that he instilled in me uh, as far as being active in organizations and being active in church and family. And uh, so hopefully, I don't know if I'll ever live up to my father, but I, I hopefully, uh, in my own way, I'm able to, to carry on his legacy somewhat. Nathan, he, he is absolutely ready to run it. Well, matter of fact, he's running it. Matter of fact, I could, I, I think he'd I think he, he do me, he, I know, I, I know Mr. Dillon and Stanley down, looking down on us. And uh, he's doing a, a terrific job, I think. We done did so much new, I just wish that they were around to see some of the new things that, you know, that, that we done did, or that Nathan, yeah, well, we done did. And my father used to say, and, and this is, one of the, I guess, the big aspects of, of, that I enjoy about farming is that every year is a fresh start. If you can stay in business, I mean, you're planting a little bitty seed, you care for it, nurture it, uh, take that seed to, to harvest, uh, it, and no matter how good or bad the crop is, I guess if you're still in business, you're at, you start again every year. It's, it's, there's a finale, there's a definite beginning and ending point every year to what you do. So that, that's one of the, I guess, one of the beautiful things about agriculture. Thank you.